right to a channel of light fluid. Yes, we are back at Hammond Manor. And this won't be the last time we head back there. There is still more password stuff to come on the channel. Uh, probably in the next couple of months. I'm not quite sure when, but we will be wrapping up a couple of things that have fallen by the wayside a bit with Tyson and Roswell. So you can be assured we'll be finishing those off before the summer anyway. This is Dean's Path A Finale. So, if you've played through it already on your own time, you'll know what's going on. If you saw Dirk's stream, you know what's happening. If you haven't, I'll stop waffling and let's get into it. It's only meant to be a nap, that's all. But as I lay there, I knew I was asleep. As if I'd closed my eyes and nothing else. But I knew that I wasn't conscious and moving around my bedroom. At first I thought I was imagining things. I started to feel that someone was there watching me. Not in the way that someone else was in the room, but someone else from far away. Far from the mansion and everything going on. Then I felt that presence get closer, till as if they were standing right in front of me. Hello? I blinked and the woods surrounding the mansion came into view. I could hear the sounds of insects and other nightlife around me, but no sign of whatever this presence was that I was feeling. It was still there. I just couldn't see it. Is someone there? Looking around, I found that the forest twisted and turned as I took each step. It was unnatural, but that's what comes from being asleep, or so I figured. There was a familiar place that I stumbled upon, and I wandered close towards the water's surface. Once upon a time I was standing there considering to jump in and hoped that I'd drown, but now I wanted anything but. My foot landed on something hard and round buried in the fallen leaves, and automatically I picked it up, rolling it over in hand. The bottle containing what was essentially poison to anyone that decided to inject themselves with it. With it in hand, I continued towards the water and looked down into the surface. What I expected to see was my own reflection staring back at me, or even nothing at all. But instead I saw someone else staring back at me. From the water's glassy surface he rose, floating right out slowly and then towards me. Taking a few steps back, he came to rest, floating slightly above the ground for me. Ah, this is a surprise. It feels like I haven't seen you here in a lifetime, Dave. Have we met? Have we met, he says. As if I'm a complete stranger. Um. Alright, I'll drop the accent. How's that? There's still nothing. What about now? Wait, Thanatos? Oh, sure, if you want. But you look so, um... Uh, so what? Dead? Well, I was going to go with big, or fleshy, or spooky, or anything other than dead, given you're a robot, right? Uh, I guess you got me there. What are you doing awake, though? I'm not. I'm sleeping. Oh, sure you are. I have to be. I went to bed after, like, a bunch of stuff happened. I want to run it past me? Not particularly. You were there. Oh, a long time ago, maybe. So it really is you, like Thanatos. For all you know, I could just be something you made up in your dream. Some strange thing going on from messing with the vault too many times. Like how I remember things I shouldn't, like what Roswell was going to do and stuff. Yeah. I don't think anyone saw that coming, but here we are. Where is here, anyway? Why am I dreaming of the woods? I want to go somewhere different? Immediately things went black. I caught the faint flash around Thanatos' eyes before it went dark, and I slowed into all of a second before we touched down again. How's this? Well, a bit more fitting for a god of death, I'd say. 
My eyes wandered down to the grave we were in front of, one I was all too familiar with. Why here, specifically? I don't want to talk to dear old dad. I could feel my face scrunching up, conflicted. You could always go somewhere else if you want. It doesn't bother me any. Why are we even meeting? I should be resting or just something. What do you think happened, Dave? What do you really think happened when you intercepted Roswell? I don't understand. What do you think happened in order for you to remember that? What do you think it means? I don't know. It just came to me. You died. I'm sorry. You were meant to die. You broke the rules. I didn't do anything. Let's recap. When you survive a traumatic event, you pass down memories of it through your genetic memory. Right, and then the vault lets you do the thing with them. The more traumatic, the more vivid the memory. But you still need to survive. For how long? What do you mean? Like, how long do I need to survive after the traumatic event for me to still pass it on? He flinched, not expecting my question, apparently. Let's have a look, shall we? Once again, we were thrown into the dark. It wasn't long before things came back into view. I knew where we were immediately. Thanatos held a finger up to his mouth, indicating for me to stay quiet as the other Dave yawned and pulled out his phone. Damn. He started to flick through whatever was happening before he decided to hit dial. I, uh, I missed my bus, I think. How was this helpful? How was this traumatic? This version of you can't hear us, but trust me, you'll want to see what happens next. I don't know. I was napping, I think, but... All three of us looked in the direction of a sudden screech. A car was coming down the road really fast, and how it was driving felt... off. Do you remember this, Dave? This dream you had right before you messed with the timeline? The other Dave wasn't moving, seemingly entranced by the car coming right towards him. I can tell you for a fact that this wasn't a dream. Just watch. I watched as I was caught by the car and my phone went dropped out of my hand as the car collided into a telephone pole with me sandwiched in between. Now tell me, Dave, what do you think happens next? I... Thanatos... Do I... Watch. The Dave that was stuck was slumped over the car but seemed to still be alive. He looked at the phone on the ground before he coughed up some blood, trying to call out to him every call, but passed out soon after. Is he? In a couple of minutes? Yes. Dead. But what has shown me this mean? Turns out you don't need to live a full life to pass on your trauma. It's long enough to send something. So I could have prevented this. Let's take another example. This time I felt like I was pushed backwards into a chair. A here will do. Not you specifically, but this might illuminate what I'm getting at. What? For I could take stock of the room, Thanatos pointed out Dad rocking back and forth in a chair nearby. He looked freshly showered but shaken. I don't want to see my dad die. You won't. I don't understand. I... I couldn't. He, he was just... Uh, and He was shaking, and when I made a move to see what was wrong, Thanatos didn't even bother to stop me. Dad? I placed my hand on his shoulder, but just passed right through as if I was a ghost. No, I... I did the right thing. I, I had to do it, but he... and... He was shaking more. If I didn't know better, he was beyond crying, but I could still see the faint red stains in his fur. Blood. 
Oh dear old Dad, has just witnessed something terrible. I'm sure you can piece together what that was. So he's about to... What, kill himself? Oh no. But this is what your dad suffered like after you were killed by Memphis for... Well, let's say a fair while. How long? Well, it doesn't matter. How long did Dad suffer like this, Thanatos? You're not convinced this is even real, so what's the point of telling you? Oh, if you must know. Well, a year or two, maybe. One day he just sort of... just stopped feeling. Became a lot more cold and quiet. That's awful. Well, he put Memphis out of commission long enough that it was worth it to some. Well, he was never the same again. Just as well, because it showed him clearly enough what needed to happen when he used the vault to save your life. And the cost of his own. Look at the man in that chair and tell me he's still living, Dave. He has vitals, but is that really alive? That's... Trust me, he's dead. This time he snapped his fingers and I was pulled forward violently, then brought to my knees on the soft ground. Which brings us back to here. Live a short life after trauma and you'll get a glimpse here and there, potentially. Live a long time and you'll see more. More traumatic, more details. Why are you telling me this? Because we've hit the critical point in where we test how well you've been paying attention. Who's been seeing the most visions? Roswell? Very good. Now why? Because he's dying? And the closer he is to dying, the more vivid the visions are. But only while he's still alive. So he's suffering. You're making him suffer. He's making himself suffer, not me. So what? That makes it all right? What am I meant to do with this? When do you think you inherit these memories, Dave? Everything you've lived in a past life, if not multiple past lives. When I used the vault? Roswell got them before using the vault. But when, though? It doesn't matter. Point is, take the vault out of the equation now. You don't need it. Well, it'd help, but you can do the thing without it. It's not as annoying as it is. So I need to somehow remember without using the vault. If time wasn't up, I'd go into details, but basically... Time's up, really? Yep. Got a game of poker I need to go play or something. Make up some convenient excuse for yourself as to why you're waking up now. Huh? And sure enough, my eyes opened, revealing to me the room that I'd fallen asleep in. When I could see the light filtering in from the window, I'd slept the whole night away. More importantly, though, no one had woken me up. There'd been no developments as far as getting off the mountain. I skipped my shower, not wanting to risk getting caught out just in case the worst happened. Heading downstairs was the priority to find out where we were at, and it served as a nice distraction from the dream I'd had. Guys? Oh, Dave, you're up. You look like you've seen a ghost. My eyes narrowed, but I chose to say nothing, looking expectantly to Roswell instead. Why don't you sleep? It could have been better, but I feel rested at least. No news. Well, no news yet. Coffee? Well, I think Orlando made some earlier. He hasn't slept, though, so don't go expecting much. Coffee instead of tea? Well, I made an educated guess and said that when you woke up, you're going to need it. He didn't fight that point once I mentioned your name. That's because he's a good friend. Well, shall I let you get to it? Thanatos and I have been running through hypotheticals the past hour. We haven't made any progress. He says, smiling. <clears throat> hey, it's better we have options than I've run dry already. Yeah, well, we still have some planning to do. 
It's all relatively fresh for me, so I'll have to see where things go. Ah, right, about that. What? Hey, if you understand how things have been working now, right? Yeah, I had someone explain it to me. Last night, anyway. Oh! It doesn't matter. Either way, I get it. Yeah, sure. Anyway, I think we have some kind of problem with that. If we can remember things when they're important, it's fine. If we can preempt things, then we don't really have a level of control. I don't get it. He's still baffled how you caught him yesterday morning. Yeah, I'm not. What's wrong with not having a level of control? The problem is our level of control comes from being able to have bearings in the timeline. Our choices can still lead us down wildly different paths. Something you removed when you knew about that past iteration without interacting with me. I'm doing what I can do, but... Well, um... So what? If it's a problem, then just tell me not to do it next time. Or Rosal can just make sure he's not there to be caught. See, that can work, but we compete against one another. Not to mention it's the furthest we've gotten. So what? You expect me to just not do it again? I don't even know how I did it the first time. Well, there's another option, but Thanatos isn't going to like it. Excuse me? You make a save right here, like you would in a video game. I don't get it. Where's the first that we got and yet at the point you're able to do what I can do? We should take the gamble and make that this is how things go from now on. Yeah, and how are you going to do that? Hey, Thanatos, you wouldn't mind erasing your memory for me, would you? Uh, like the last day or so? Are you insane? Nope. It would work in theory, wouldn't it? You'd have no way of knowing what's going to happen with Dave springing this on us moving forward. That's risky. This whole thing doesn't work out, then we're screwed. Maybe it's best we not mess with it? All the other Thanatos to follow us through with. I trust his judgment, though I voice what I want. This is still a lot of the process before coffee. For sure. What you say goes. I need to go find out where the others are. Austin and Tyson are asleep, I think, in a side room over there. Vengeance keep you watch while Sal rests. Sal is upstairs. Orlando's in a kitchen. And there's been nothing, no Dean or Oswin. Well, not yet. Better luck, I'm going to track down a dragon. It wasn't hard. If he hadn't been told exactly where he was, the worried mumbling gave him away. Hey, Dave? Yep, just me. I hear there was coffee. A mug was quickly passed over to me and Orlando was pacing around the kitchen. How much sleep have you had exactly? Me? Sleep? Yes. You? Have you had any? Of course. Roswell says otherwise. Okay, maybe, no, not even a little bit. I'd say you should, maybe you should try, but who knows if you missed your shot of that. Did something happen? No, at least not according to Roswell or Thanatos. I've only just gotten it myself. Oh, good. Still no idea what happened with Oswin or Dean, though. I'd asked Roswell, but at this point I was just hoping for a different answer. After all, that was my boyfriend out there. I was worried. I know, that's kind of the problem, though, right? There shouldn't have been any reason why Dean didn't come back if he was able. Which means he wasn't able. We don't know that. Though it doesn't look good. So, what? Now that it's likely going after him? That's the worst possible idea you could have come up with, even before coffee. Well, yeah, but... Sal's hand on my shoulder made me jump, spinning to see him there in a daze. Not resting. Resting is only going to do so much. He held himself to a cup of coffee and wandered over the pantry to look for something to eat. Did you want me to make you something? I'll be fine. Probably. It's just important to eat something. Anything good left? 
There's bread. Move, I'll make you something. Sal wandered back over to me as Orlando got to work whipping something up. The moment I saw the eggs come out, I recognised the makings of pancake batter. Pancakes. What I'd really like about now is a decent waffle. For also I hadn't finished off the maple syrup, I'd feel like I was missing out. Isn't that more of a dessert thing anyway? We also don't have ice cream. Well, we don't get dessert for breakfast, why not chocolate cake? We're not having chocolate cake. Or dessert waffles. Pumpkin bread? If there's any left, though Tyson might have beaten you to it. Well, Dave can have always effectively cake for breakfast. Why can't I? Because yours is chocolate, probably. Oh, well, yeah, that's really different to what Orlando is making now. It has eggs, milk, flour. Sure, there's chocolate, but you just use less sugar or something. This is the worst sales pitch I've ever heard. Fine, then what's the difference between chocolate and Pop-Tarts? They do both have frosting. You shouldn't be eating Pop-Tarts for breakfast either. They do sell them in the breakfast section of the supermarket. Do you guys want pancakes or not? Well, I'm not going to say no if you're offering. I just smiled and continued drinking my coffee. There was something off about how we were talking breakfast when Dean was somewhere out in the woods, possibly dead. Maybe we just wanted to ignore the dread that was hanging over us. I could feel it even the others weren't showing they were too. Where did Thanatos end up? We got all thinking about his choice. The power is to check in on Benson. I should go check on him too. Would you mind thanking him for me? No worries, I'll be back soon. I left the three of them to get him breakfast ready and wandered outside, the crisp mountain air feeling pleasant to breathe in. Benson was standing there looking thoughtful about something, though noticed me approach. A good morning. Hey, any news? And none yet, though with more of you services, it might be an idea to figure out what exactly we intend on doing next. Well, going into the forest isn't a good idea. Well, the circumstances paint out as correct. We may not have a choice. Even after... You know, Oswin and Dean not coming back. I assure you I'm intending full well on going after Oswin. As they would have anyway until you're all safely off the mountain. Oh, understandably, Dean's lack of returning causes some problems. Anything specific? Should anyone else go in there, there's no telling if they were to make it back unharmed or suffer a worse fate. You mean dying? How blunt I was seen to make Benson pause, stroking his moustache. If I may be so bold, you seem different this morning. Blame Thanatos. <laughs> of course. It's not so bad, but... I looked behind me, wandering closer and whispering once I knew the coast was clear. I know about Oswin and Roswell. What about them? Oswin didn't tell you. It was his turn to check for else listening in, and turned to me when satisfied we were in fact alone. I was there with him that day at the hospital. Not during the event, but there to pick him up and take him home. As for why he was at the hospital, yes, I know. Both reasons. I nodded slowly, frowning. And this whole time? This whole time what? I've been playing a reluctant conspirator to some deluded whims of a terminal child. That sounds rude, but I guess. Uh, thankfully not, as his... Uncle, for the most part, has been playing that role instead. Keeping one childish boy in trouble is hard enough, let alone trying to handle both. Not to mention Thanatos. The sooner I don't have to deal with that rat, the better. He's too much like his... I suppose the term is master, isn't it? I think I can see it. Maybe. 
Regardless, I believe our privacy is about to be ruined. What makes you say that? He pointed past me to the door, Thanatos pressing his nose up against the glass window. Ah, right. I would be so lucky so the reason he's here is to speak with you, would I? Not according to Roswell? Oh, bother. I wonder if the door had opened it, Thanatos racing out the moment there's enough space to slip through. What's going on out here? I'm just talking with Benson. How'd making a decision go? A decision? Uh, what decision? Roswell wants me to leave parts of my memory. As in plural, not just of the last day. It all goes well, this whole branch goes. If ever at risk of being put on a commission, I delete my memory. But now, there's no sense in doing it, I'm just going to be asking about the gap tomorrow. Makes sense, I suppose. So I haven't seen either Hoss or Tyson, though. Yes, that's where I'm going next. Play nice with Benson. Yeah, I'll be nice. I'm always nice. Uh, should anything happen, I shall let you know, Dave. I wandered inside, finishing off my coffee and rolling the mug around in my hands. Tyson, Hoss, you're around anywhere nearby? Nothing. At least not at first. I heard movement upstairs and followed while I heard, hoping it was Tyson and Hoss. Alright, you got in off. Now what? I didn't think that far ahead. I could see they managed to get the sword off from the suit of armour that's in the room, but now it's just laying on the ground between them. Tyson shrugging and Hoss rolling his eyes. Am I interrupting something? They looked at me as if answering my question the best way possible. They just pointed to the sword on the ground. So why did you remove the sword anyway? In case we needed it. With well, Dean out of the picture for now and Benson worry about letting of us just have guns. Well, it seemed to be a nice enough distraction to pass the time when we couldn't sleep. And you didn't just go for kitchen knives. Yeah, I deal with Orlando like he is right now. Making pancakes? Uh, more like fretting than the bit all over the place. Pretty sure he's making pancakes too. Sal and Roswell were downstairs with him as well. well. I see everyone's awake now. I spoke to Benson too. No change in what's happening either. Damn. It's a bit of a stretch hoping for some miracle, but... What? Like Dean just rocking up and saying something like they tripped and fallen or something? If that's his excuse for not getting back, I'm asking Sal to hit him upside the head. Do it yourself. I'm not hitting random people, Tyson. Sal just has set the precedent. I gave them a wry smile as I went for the sword, picking it up. So what do we do with this? It's too heavy for me. I came it here, then. As I handed it off, the sudden weight caught Tyson off guard and he dropped it. Shit, that's heavier than I remember. You just handle it. Or let it fall to the floor, at least. So what, we get Sal to use it? Well, Sal's probably the only one I'd trust with the gun. It'd be a waste to give this to him. Well, I can handle a gun fine. You're just as likely to turn it sideways because it's more efficient. Yeah, because it is. Isn't it? Pretty sure Lando would do the same. Or like, maybe not, given his family. The point is, now that we've gotten it free, we don't have a use for this. Well, our distraction served its purpose, but now what? Well, we can go downstairs and have breakfast. Then decide what we're doing about Dean and Oswin. Well, it's as good as plan as any. Fine. Breakfast, I can do with that coffee anyway. We wandered downstairs. It's only a couple of minutes before Orlando brought up pancakes. The others already having taken their seats. There wasn't much talking. The mood seemed better than normal. It was just how I was sitting there feeling as though there was an actual chance of surviving. Maybe it was something else. 
behave. I looked to my side and saw him floating there, none the others seemingly noticing. Um, uh, probably not best not to say anything, Dave. People might think you're crazy. It was then that Benson and Thanatos wandered in. Thanatos scrambling up to sit atop the table, and Benson taking a seat and helping himself to the coffee pot. Uh, right, how'd things go outside? Uh, fine. Fine, he says. Thanatos got me looking towards Thanatos, the, uh, the other one. What are you looking at? Nothing. Nothing, he says. There was a snickering from where I knew the other Thanatos was floating. This time I knew not to say anything. What did you want me to say? I need to focus, Dave. We have a plan we need to. He stopped mid-sentence, looking me over. You doing all right? Huh? First I thought he'd hit me with the sound again, the world immediately going black, but without the pain in my head. Just that faint snickering from near the Thanatos fading out after everything else. I was just hallucinating. It was a dream. He wasn't real. Part of me deep down worried I was going crazy, that Thanatos and Roswell were reading more into what had happened than what was appropriate. Or maybe not appropriate, just what was realistic. I just had to remind myself what was happening and what was important. I'm doing okay. Just worried about Dean, yeah. The answer was directed at Thanatos, but the time I registered he wasn't next to me, instead further down the table at Roswell, I felt the hand on my shoulder. Hey. Oh, hey Ty, what's up? You're losing it. Losing what? You know, going crazy. Maybe. A lot is happening in my head right now. Tyson dropped into the chair next to me, eyes narrowing. I'll spill it. What's there to talk about? I'm worried about Dean. I'm worried about Oswin too. I'm worried about what's about to happen next, but... What? I feel so calm about it. It's creeping me out. Great sounds I was adding if he wanted a way to talk to Roswell. Then we should always just give you some space while you think of a plan. Well, I don't have a plan. Just, I don't know, thoughts. Oh, maybe thoughts are what we need. I think it's more what Dave needs. To voice them, anyway. I know I have too many sometimes. Like? Just the intrusive ones. Not necessarily unpleasant, but not necessarily helpful if said. Now with Hoss on this, like what? Like where Memphis gets his shirts. What? His shirts. They're a nice colour and would probably fit me. You have the advantage of not having as much bulk as I do. You can wear nice clothes. Easy to find clothes. It can't be that hard to find clothes that fit. Why else do you think my clothes are plain? You're a simple guy with simple tastes. If I liked plaid, it wouldn't be an issue. I just buy shirts from where Dean gets his. Dominic wore anything beyond the singlet, then I say ask him for options. You might not need to wait around to ask. He's here. I'm sorry? Everyone remain here. I'll go see what he wants. Is it time? Is it happening? Well, I can't see anyone else out there. He doesn't seem to have a weapon. Not exactly a surefire way to say things are safe, but we shall see. I'm coming too. Why don't you let Benson handle it, Dave? I was out of the dining room before Benson was. It seemed as though everyone else was going to come along too. By the time we reached the back door, Benson had forcibly pulled me behind him and headed outside first. But I was right behind him, eager to know why he was here instead of Dean. 
He stopped as he saw his exit the house, but of his hand slowly, if only for a moment. Hey, take it easy, just here to talk. You have some nerve showing up here. What did I just say? I think I may just make the walk just the hell of it. Where's Dean? Oh, tied up. Doing what? I get the impression he means literally, Dave. Then where? In the cabin? You know about the cabin? Of course he knows about the cabin. We all know about the cabin, given it's been out there for years. Oh, makes sense. It's so far out there in the middle of the trees, figured it was just forgotten about. And Dean? Yeah, tied up. A mind explaining why? Short answer is Memphis. Well, I did the tie-in, but he told me to do it. He's meant to come back. That was the deal. Don't you think I know that? And what happened? Roswell pushed past me, then Benson, and stood the closest to Dom, Thanatos leaping from his shoulder to mine as he wandered past. Exchange when we planned at first. Oswald was going to stay. I was going to show your friend the way out, but that's when Memphis got an idea. Heaven forbid. Look at that, the deal wasn't good enough for him, so now he's sending the threat. A threat? And he sent you to deliver that? No, I came here because of other reasons. We have your friend tied up in the watermill. You know the place, right? Yeah, I know the place. But why there? It's our way off the mountain. Makes for a quick getaway. Now we'll go get him and you keep Memphis distracted. Easy. I believe there's some other complication. Yeah, Memphis wants you to bring him everything he needs. We're out of Oswin a bit to get some information, but he's pretty tight-lipped about everything. I know I'm going to regret asking this, but... If we refuse? Well, he's killing your friend first, then Oswin soon after. No point keeping them around, they're not useful leverage. Wait, what? My blood ran cold, my hand started to shake. Dean was in that much trouble. Was I about to lose him? It was one thing to go into a dangerous situation, but it was another to actively hear that he was going to be killed. Thankfully, I didn't need to say anything. Benson was the one to protest on my behalf. This will not stand. Now what do you want to do? Well, we need to go say them both, obviously. Yeah, how? He's going to bring a whole time machine out in the woods. But it's a room in the house. We can't do that. You can explain to the boss, then. Not like he's going to listen. How long do we have? For tonight. You don't show up before the sun sets, they're dead. Then you're next for making him come to you. And all we have to do is just bring the time machine with us? Then he'll let Oswin and Dean go? Your friend? Probably. Oswin? Yeah, don't think so. Yeah, typical. There's insurance he's not going to be duped. It's surprisingly logical for him, but given the circumstances, I can see why he'd go this route. There's something else, too. What now? I want to get a deal. And how well the last one went? Just between us, not involving the boss at all. What deal did you have in mind? I want to be left out of it, both me and Jack. A pardon? Why are you going to kill the boss, get off the mountain or die trying? I want to be caught in the crossfire. How does Jack factor into this? They're gay, Roswell. They're boyfriends. No, wait just a damn minute. So you're not? Jack's going to be so heartbroken to hear that. What assurance do we have that you and Jack will not side with Memphis if it comes to it? You don't have any. If it keeps me alive, that's the option I'm going to take. Well, that's hardly reassuring. And what of Jack? Where will he be doing all of this? Watching Oswin. All right. Well, in that case, we shall need some time to prepare. How much time? 
How do we even measure that? I go always to what exactly? Kill Memphis, we have a day's worth of preparation time. We might not even have that. So do we have a deal or what? As far as Oswin is concerned, I'll be looking to retrieve him. And make no promises if Jack decides to get in the way. Fine. As far as Memphis, you'll stay out of the way? He shrugged, leaving it at that. Don't keep him waiting too long. And back into the trees he went, leaving us standing there wondering where exactly we stood on his deal. Well, I could have gone better. Could it have, though? Beats me. Sure feels like we're out of options. We've been put on a time at the very least. Oh, taking down Memphis is a big ask. Giving guns aren't an option, doesn't leave us with much. So, what does work on Memphis if we can't use guns? Uh, bigger guns? There could be a range of there we have time or specialized ammunition to really make that viable. It's poison out too. I'm not willing to gamble on poison given how much he can drink. He'd probably just metabolize it. I have a really dumb idea. If it's that done, then why suggest it? How dumb exactly are we talking? It better not be magic. Hang on, something a little bit more primitive than magic. What, like a sword? The moment I said it, it dawned on me. But I didn't ex like exactly what was being insinuated. Now we have one of those. I don't believe he meant that as a legitimate suggestion. Uh, the point where I should we really be ruling out anything? I can't lift it though, so not like it's a great suggestion. So I could probably do it. Or we could just use a smaller knife. If his scales are tough enough to make him bulletproof, I don't think a display sword is going to, in this case, quite literally cut it. What? So we need surgery or something's just fucked? Unless they're going through his mouth, maybe. If his insides are vulnerable, then we might have options. Like, well, getting him to swallow something comes to mind immediately, but we don't have much hope of that. That's why he sneaks some razor blades something into some booze and get him to drink it. Think that could work? No. So what can we do? It's not like we can just hand over what he wants, even if we wanted to. Can we owe it to him? This is just a body anyway. How's that going to help? He wants a time machine, not a rat. Inside my body is a USB. All the source code to make another vault. At least that's what Oswin said when he put it in there. What, so we're saying he can just make his own? Or he wanted the completed thing? It doesn't exactly strike me as the patient time to take that option either. So what, there'd be a second vault? Another version of you out there somewhere? It's only one me, Dave. USB is a fake. So? Are you trying to him with that instead? It feels even less likely to work. Well, I don't hear any better ideas. We have this place sort of idea to get the guy to drink razors, some other guns, and what? One last fight to dupe him and get away? And then we have to worry about him following us, right? That's a fair point, yeah. I sure as hell off this mountain. I don't want anyone following us home. Which means we really do need to kill him, huh? When you put it like that, sounds almost impossible. That's be a way, right? Some weakness or something? It's not like he's immortal. Unless... He's not immortal. And he's in good shape too, I think. So hoping for a heart attack or an aneurysm isn't going to work either. If either those things happen, I'd be impressed. Well, the sword was sharp, I guess we could try go medieval on him? What, like Knight Slain Dragon style? I take it back. I don't like talking about the casual murder of my ancestors. You were the one that raised it. Well, now I'm the one unraising it. I want a mill, huh? Something come to mind? Thinking if it's operational, just blasting with some sound. 
because it's cold into the vault. I can do it to you. I can do it to him. No problem. What? Then we've got an unconscious dragon on the floor along with an unconscious Dave to just figure out how to kill him? It sounds brutal. I mean, I get what we're needing to do. The more we talk about it, the less I think that this is something I can do. Thanosaur shook his head and gestured to the railing for me to set him down. So here's where we stand. Dean's about to die, followed by Oswin, then the rest of us. I went to speak, but Thanatos cut me off. We can roll Dominic and Jack, maybe. Potentially, but in order for this to stick, Memphis needs to die. Any questions? We have to kill my dad. Don't get me wrong, I'm not as upset as you might think I am, but... Is it even possible? Bulletproof, display sword proof. I imagine fireproof and poison proof are only making things harder for us. You have that right. So what? Where does that leave us exactly? I don't know. I haven't tested any of this. If anything's about to go wrong, your guess is as good as mine. Our resources, what's in the house, and what areas can we can reach within reason. Within reason? Like what? I don't think we're going to get shit out of the hedge maze or the greenhouse. Or the pool outside of maybe a hiding place. Well, hiding's off the table. We'd be found eventually, for sure. We can't run, we can't hide, so we fight? You're not fighting anyone. None of us might have a choice, Tyson. If it's a choice between us or them. You know, we did run, choose and condemn Dean. Then he just continue on till he found us. Even after he got the time machine? It's all a time machine, remember? Once he learns that, the other people that were here are gone. He's going to come looking for us, to try and get it to work. We looked at each other. One by one I could see each of my friends deflated the realisation set in that we had no good options. How do you bring yourself to kill someone, let alone someone who's likely unkillable? Thanatos, can I ask you something? What? Have we ever killed Memphis? At all? As in? In any timeline, anything that offers us a clue? I need time to check. Don't get your hopes up, though. He went immediately still, and Roswell wandered over to scoop him up. Every now and again he twitched. After the first minute of waiting, I left him to it. All right, well, until we hear back, what do we do? I feel I'll have to open the armory up after all. Is that wise? I wouldn't say no to a gun. Do you know how to use one safely? How hard can it be? Take the safety off, point at the bad guys, pull the trigger, simple. You know how to take the safety off? Not exactly. I can guess that's the part where you turn it sideways, Hoss, and already clear me on that being wrong. Good grief. I wouldn't I'd be any good with a gun either. It's absolutely a problem needing to be solved. Imagine anything easy to use isn't going to be do much against his hide. We should probably bring Oswin his revolver, regardless of what we do. I concur, if only for his peace of mind. If he's a scientist, would there be anything of use in his lab? He's the scientist, so if, there's only, if there was, only he would know. Not necessarily. What did you have in mind? Well, he's got the bare basics. Nothing there's going to be overly useful. But I think a bit more exotic might be worth bringing. I don't know what he could do with the man in the woods, but you never know. Well, guess we'd better go check. It's on the way to the armories, it is, so at least that way we can all stick together. Uh, perhaps it'd be best if we split the groove in half? I guess I know the places we need to search, sure. We headed inside. Rosal holding Thanatos, we headed into the basement. Then from there into the passage behind the secret door. Right, so... If anything seems useful, be sure to point it out. Useful? As in anything you need to kill a dragon with? Sure, I'm glad I chose this group to follow. Yeah, well, I'm going to go explain guns to Dyson, then. 
Did you see both of them not following Benson in there? No matter how we all feel, I think. Roswell, does anything spring to mind immediately we could be looking for? I think Orlando is probably the better one to ask here. Me? I'm nothing like my dad. Thankfully. When all says then you can share your dislike of your dad with Tyson's dislike of his. Uh, for now, can we just focus? Uh, sorry, yeah, let me think. Heavy duty injector gun could work, though. I don't think we're going to get close enough to do anything with it. You know, we did. Only scales like, you know, stab proof. There's some fleshy parts you could still get to and maybe get it to work. But. Does he smoke? It would get trigger him using one of those exploding cigars. You just happen to have one of those that actually blow him up? Well, not exactly, no. Could we use explosives at all? If we're inside a water well, would that be safe? Dean's inside there, so we'd put her at risk if we bring the whole place down. Which we're not doing. In the situation, I imagine burying him alive would have worked wonders. At Memphis, I mean. Oh, good, I was about to say. Roswell placed Thanatos down by Oswin's desk and started to look around. The others did so too, though ultimately there wasn't much to look at. Roswell made a beeline directly for the cabinet of dangerous things and the do check the other room. Me though, I went to Thanatos, trying to shake the feeling that I was being watched again. It's just in my head. It's not real. Just need to figure it out. I sat down in Oswin's chair and looked through what drawers that were unlocked. Occasionally looking back to Thanatos, see if he's awake again. Thanatos? You still twitching, looking through who knows how many different things to find the answer to our problem. Oh, what about this? Seriously? What you guys find? I call back on my shoulder, hearing them make a discovery near the room. I'm not finding much over here that we used to immediately put him out of action. Just stuff that could make him sick. Dave, what are you doing? Just wait on Thanatos? Well, Orlando's found something worth considering. What is it? Acid. What, like hydrochloric? I just saw acid and had the idea. Well, what kind of acid is it? Uh, nitric? Well, that's dangerous. Someone raged tell Oswin off having such dangerous things in a lab. How dangerous are we talking? Very. On a scale of 1 to 10? Well, if 10 is the most dangerous thing, it pushes 11 easily. If this gets into contact with anything organic, it could explode. You know, I was just thinking we could injure him enough he can't recover, like blind him or something. It's not even going to be a quick death. What if he gets mad and, I don't know, start shooting wildly though I can't see? Or decide to torture the place? Which, you know, rescuing Dean. What do you know what to do about that? Just walk in and make the trade or think he has some, him somewhere else? I mean, so we could sneak to and avoid confronting Memphis entirely? It'd mean we could do any number of things knowing Dean is safe. Do you remember we can't really afford to destroy the place that's stranding ourselves on the mountain? Aye, I'm done looking. Verdict? So to answer the more important question, you have succeeded in killing Memphis more than once. Alright, how? I should clarify. You as a group managed to string something together. Why is this not filling me with a lot of confidence? Because most times when he dies, he's taken a few of you out. What options have worked, though? One well, that works the most is dropping the house on him. Buried alive, basically. Well, I'm surprised that works. If he can withstand bullets, dropping a house on him, I wouldn't have thought worked. Why is it easier the two to set up? The other option is to blow him up. What, with a bomb? Oh, even going to get explosives. The question is how you're going to get them close enough without killing yourselves. If we could keep Dean safe, then this would really matter. We bury him and then just call for help, right? Well, we don't need to worry about someone killing us. We have a lot more time. True. 
Rosal looked over the vial of acid in his hand carefully, nudging me after having decided something. I'm going to fill a couple of these up. Seriously? More importantly, why? You never know. Might need to burn away the ropes holding Dean, for instance. A knife, Roswell. We can use a knife for that. I'm doing it anyway. The Huffy went back into the other room, Orlando looking between him and us and sure what to say. Go on, just say it. Uh, should we bring in more than just acid, or...? Do whatever you like. Roswell wanted off to play with chemicals and rolled out what I wanted to do. Which was? Knock the three of you out. Hey, excuse me, what? Why would you want to do that? They could have some flash of insight when unconscious. Beats me what they remember. If you want us to remember something, can you just tell us at this point? I run the numbers for every instance in each of you? Pass. Sounds like you want to do it more for fun than anything else. For it's worth it for not being conscious on the floor, thanks. If I you under, I promise you only see you looking somewhat dignified this time. What do you mean, this time? I'm going to check on the others. Why? Is there anything else in here I can think of using? There's some amazing poison we know is going to work or a weapon we don't really know about. I opened went to leave the lab when I heard footsteps approaching, so it just freezing on the spot. The other stepped into the lab, led by Benson, for I had to go anywhere. I trust nothing is wrong? No, just weighing options. Well, your guns now, that's something. Oh, we don't have appropriate ammunition, as Benson thought. So where's that leave us? I plan short of how to save Dean, it appears. That just sounds like a fancy way of saying we have nothing. We have acid? Uh, pardon? Acid, like, you know, acid, from near the room. What are you going to do with acid? Roswell's probably just getting some vials of it in case we need it. Epilus may not work, but acid could potentially, if we could get it into him somehow. What, with a pneumatic injector? Wait, you think we can just inject him with acid? Truth, we don't even need acid. Enough air injected into an air will run the risk of causing an embolism. Which isn't exactly fast enough to put him out of commission. A true. Hey Dave, any idea what they're talking about? No. A small pocket of air that cut off blood circulation to the brain would be the simple way to explain it. Oh, you do that then? Yeah, sure. Still need to get close enough. Any idea what we can do, Benson? You want to go help Oswin, but it's not where Dean is. Yes, well, I can't rightly let you confront Memphis alone now, can I? When we arrive, Memphis is going to want us to hand over something to him. And even then, there's no telling what he'll do to us after. So what do we give him, then? A pardon? I'll give him something. I'll just give him Thanatos, right? That's what he wants, even if it's not exactly going to do him any good. But isn't that, like, bad? Bad? How? Like, all of a sudden Memphis can do the bullshit being able to see other people die. Isn't that bad? Assume if such a thing would traumatise him enough, potentially. I won't worry about it. Thanatos gestures for us all to come close and we stood around the desk he's perched on. If he tries anything, I just turn myself off. I won't be able to see him without this body. If the plan's just gone and confront him, I'm going to be out of range anyway. You're just going to shut down, like that. Think about what, you, think about what we can do now, Dave. Imagine Memphis got to that point as well. Ah, right. Just so we're clear. What? exactly are we talking about? Being able to recall trauma without needing to use the vault. Potentially problematic with the demise traumatising for him to remember it before it happens. And that creates another problem though. This assumes that that's already happened. Give me a shot of that because I don't remember anything on this branch at all. 
Well, you wouldn't if you had your memory deleted, right? You have a point. If Antos only deletes his memory, this work, right? I should plan on saying something changed that. I hate to be the one to bring this up, but if we're to go rescue Dean and Oz, we should probably do this sooner rather than later. The moment it gets dark, we're going to struggle. Are you even ready? Can you even be ready for what you're about to hope to do? I suppose so. The plans are to go get Dean and afterwards help Oswin, right? As much as I'd like to secure Oswin first, yes, I believe that is the best way forward. So once we've secured everyone some method defending themselves, should the worst happen, we should leave. It took us an hour, we eventually got all got something and met in the foyer. Not that we thought the extra hour made us any more ready for what we were about to do. Oss had a knife, Tyson had a gun, Sal had been lumped with a sword from upstairs as well as having a gun of his own, Roswell had his vials of acid and Orlando had a kitchen knife. It wasn't much, but it's all we had to take down someone that conventional weaponry just wouldn't work against. I'd ended up with a hunting knife and Benson had his own gun, though he'd apparently swapped out the bullets. This only left Thanatos, who seemed to be standing on the steps, lost in thought. Thanatos, are you alright? Yeah, maybe. Only maybe? This could very well be the last time we talk. Once we leave the threshold of the backyard, well, I won't know what's happening. What if everything goes well when we come back? I'm going to be off, remember? Oh, right. He wandered up the arm of Roswell and his offer to him, shaking his head. So, this is it then. It's the last thing I can do for you all. After I turn myself off, the only code that will work in the door downstairs is the one to actually open it. And you're going to tell us the code? If you figure it out, that's entirely on you. Otherwise, no. Well, thanks, Thanatos. Or, oh, um, helping? Kind of? I guess I'll take that. He looked at Roswell holding on to one of his tusks. Oh, Roswell, good luck. Be safe. Frank could hold him out on his voice being different. He went limp and fended Roswell's ready hands. I'm a toss. I'd like he just pivoted into another voice randomly there when talking only to you, Roswell. Something you're keeping from us? It's not really a time, but I like to think Thanatos and I were friends. Friends enough that even with everything going on, he's looking out for us, or me anyway. Guess him offline is not exactly much we can do to ask him about it, huh? But then there's that other thing. Open the door to the vault itself. I don't look at me, I've no idea where it could be. I don't look at me either. Opening at this point doesn't feel like it's going to get us anything new, so, you know. I have some guesses I'd like to try, but we have something more important to deal with. A saving team. And Oswin. It's worth raising this isn't going to be some leisurely walk in the woods. It is going to be incredibly dangerous, and there's no guarantee that any of us is going to come out of this unscathed. Benson straightened, looking at these as each in turn. Now, if there's any of you that wish to remain behind, as is the reasonable expectation, now is the time. None of us moved at first, looking at one another, though the looks we shared were of worry and fear. I stepped forward all the same, shifting uncomfortably on my feet. Dean is my boyfriend, but even before then he's a dear friend to me and everyone else here, so, you know, I want to go. There were murmurs of agreement soon after, Benson looking directly to me. Very well, Dave. I make no promises, but I shall try to keep you all alive. I don't worry, I think any of us wants to end up dead. We'll be careful. We have to be. We set off, and for the first time I could remember we were all heading into the woods as a single group. Vague clashes through my head were of memories where some of us were out here, some of various other spots doing things, but never like this. Even somewhere Dean was with us, which gave me additional pangs and worried the longer I dwelled on the fact that he's not here with us now. Dave? I slowed down slightly let Roswell catch up, understanding that while his voice was low, everyone turned briefly to see if anything was wrong. I'm sorry. He kept his voice low, occasionally looking about the woods. 
Maybe I should have tried harder, or been less stubborn, or I don't know. It's not like you're the only one. It's partially my fault Dean has been locked up in the watermill overnight. Given his circumstances, would anyone have made a better choice? I don't think so. I could see Roswell holding Thanatos carefully, and look back to the others who seemed to be following Benson almost single file ahead of us. So he's really gone. Roswell nodded slightly, clutching him closer to his chest. Even though Thanatos' eyes were half closed, he looked no different how he was normally. Just further proof that he's never really alive to begin with. You have Tyson. I have had Thanatos, so... He sighed, putting Thanatos in his pocket. I have a theory about what he's trying to say, right before he shut down. What about wishing you good luck? About opening the vault door, as if he knew that I knew what to put in. And do you know? Like I said before, I have hunches, but like, nothing concrete. Nothing I can test out here either. I see. When we get back, I suppose we can try them out, right? When we get back? I looked at the rest of the group ahead of us, worried. Roswell put his hand on my arm, breathing in deep. We'll get back. Just you watch. Our continued march was in silence for the most part. Benson seemed to know which way to go. They'd all looked for the most part the same. Each little sound, each shadow made me more worry that we were about to be jumped. But it never came. Instead came the sudden halt of Benson leading the way, causing us all to freeze. Hi! Benson wasted no time in firing off a shot, loud enough I could hear it, but didn't seem to echo out into the woods. The delivery missed, though, was Jack only seemed to be half duck out the way and seemed unharmed. Well, that's not very nice. I talk fast. Why are you here? Came to talk. About? You guys seen Dom around? He left this morning and never came back. Fuck off, we have more important things to worry about. Benson held up his hand, confused. A Dominic never returned? You didn't run into him on the way here? Should I have? I don't fucking know. If I may ask, who's looking over Oswin at the moment? Oh, he's tied up. He's not going anywhere. Not with his injury, anyway. Explain. Yeah, he seen a gig of fuss after Dom had to take your friend over the watermill. The boss shot him in the leg and left to swap places with Dom. But he's alive. Dominic neglected to mention any sort of injury. Alive enough? No doubt by your friend, though. Can I ask something? Just if we're not going to get stabbed. Well, if you want a bit of stabbing... I watched as Tyson went to shoot Jack the moment the knife came out, but Benson beat him to it, shooting the knife out of his hand instead. Kill Joy. Why did you want to know if Dom is all right? Because he's my buddy. Uh, just a buddy? Yeah, what are you insinuating? That you two are romantically involved, I believe. Oh, is that what you want to know? What's Dom been telling you? Well, he kind of cut us a deal. We leave you two out of what we're going to do while we get our friend and you leave us alone. That's boring. You're going to clear that with me first. Am I to believe you're not going to honour that arrangement? Believe me, I have no qualms in defending myself should you put yourself in the way. Well, I'm not going to argue to any, agree to any deal I wasn't part of that came with Dom or the boss first. Tyson lined up his gun again, threatening to shoot. What? Can they try shooting me again? How do you know I've another knife ready to go? Once again, Benson shot the knife out of his hand, grunting. Are we going to keep running into this problem, or shall we be on our way? I have more than just two knives, I get your point. If the boss finds out I'm all the way out here on watching your boss, I'm going to get it. Fine by me. Well, so we're going to let him go after all? Yes. Why? Because as much as I dislike Oswin being taken care of by this one his compatriot, by comparison it's much better than leaving him alone with a homicidal maniac. I can try harder if you like. Shut the fuck up. Make me. 
Jack, answer me this. Would you rather waste time here or find Dominic? Furthermore, would you rather waste time here and run the risk of dealing with Memphis later, or avoid that by leaving now? Jack took a step back, frowning for a moment in thought. Fine, but this isn't over. Yes, it is. Now run along, we have an appointment with your boss. Benson gestured the knives laying on the soil, and Jack reluctantly backed up enough to pick them up, keeping his eyes mainly on Tyson. It's your funeral. If you see Dom, tell him I was looking for him. He shot us all one foul squint before dashing off into the woods. There, there, Hoss. Yeah, I'm all right, I promise. Are you sure? He's trembling. Sal had his hands carefully on Hoss's shoulders when I turned to look, easing them away carefully. It's only a gunshot, that's all. Apologies, though the situation did warrant it. I know. Are you going to be all right knowing that, you know, Tyson has a gun too? As harsh as this may come across, he doesn't have a choice. Memphis isn't going to care when it comes to firing his gun either. This is indeed true. Perhaps it might be best if Hosters sit out. Hello, that seems like an even worse idea. Well, I can agree with Dave. Even send me off to see if Oswin is alright would be better, but I'm not volunteering for that either. Well, maybe it'd be best if we lingered at the back. With the revised walking order, we continued on. My mind was on Dean, though, hoping he was all right and wondering just what had driven Jack out here. He left Oswin alone, too, as there's a big risk if he was taken if Memphis found out. Not they had a chance to consider it for too long. The watermill soon came into view and we all froze behind the trees, looking onward. Somewhere in there was Memphis, along with Dean, as well as our way out. Now, everyone, there's no telling what's going to happen inside. Nothing good, I assure you. But should anyone wish to turn back now, or wait here? He looked to each of us in turn. When none of us budged, he nodded slowly. Everyone stay quiet and as calm as you can be given the circumstances. We approached slowly, Benson leading us on. We were right behind him as he had Thanatos to pass over. Only when we heard something, anything to indicate that either Memphis or Dean was in fact in here somewhere. But in the dark, I just had to have faith that something would show soon. He was waiting for us as we descended the stairs, just sitting there on some old machinery. The moment he'd spotted us, he discarded the cigar he'd been smoked into a dark corner. Brought everyone along, did ya? His hand lingered over his gun sitting next to him, showing he meant business. I know what I want, and it's just not to get ugly. Roswell stepped forward slowly and held out Thanatos, set him on something for Memphis to see and scurried back behind Benson. You brought me a stinking rat. That's the best you can do. That's... that? The vault? The time machine you wanted? Or, um... I stopped talking as Benson shot me a stern look through though his attention was drawn back to Memphis chuckling. You know, you think a job like this would be easy? To get a hostage, ransom him off for something, get paid double and you get to watch the fear in someone's eyes they part with something they don't want to. That's always the best part. Getting to watch that very moment they have to hope, have their hope taken from them when they're threatened for a bullet between their eyes soon after. He rolled his shoulders, placing his foot on the nearby crate and eyeing us carefully. Secure I am. Thinking I'll dupe that bear you set out you had that promise of escape. They followed me in here like a stooge. You come and rescue him and trade what? A rat for him? Very funny. Thing is, I'm not in a joking mood. Done playing games. Done listening to Dom wanting me to hold off. He kicked the crate open. What rolled out was sticks of dynamite. Or if not dynamite, they looked enough like explosives to play the part. So, you want to play around? Fine by me. Just don't expect me to play along. He picked up his gun and before he'd even placed a single digit on it, Benton had his out of file off a shot. Secure Dean, Go! Benson's next shot wasn't at Memphis, but rather explosives nearby. Not that he connected, though probably for our sake. We took cover as Memphis bellowed and started unloading Benson's direction, missing as he jumped behind a large machine and kept going while we headed in the opposite direction. 
While Benson and Memphis seem to duke it out, gunfire echoing all around us, we desperately search for Dean. We try calling out, but his lack of response was explained away the moment we found him. Hoss huddled in the corner of the small room we found Dean in, covering his ears from all the gunfire around us. Sal and Tyson tried to get the ropes holding Dean in place free, using Hoss's discarded knife to make the job easier. He took a big gulp of air, looking around quickly. Well, everyone's here. Oh, what's happening? Before anything else, I rushed over and hugged him tight, though it took a moment before Dean hugged me back. He was still shell-shocked from everything suddenly happening, it seemed. Who came to rescue you? Sal grabbed him by the wrist and led the way out, Tyson grabbing Hoss and we made a break for it that we didn't get far. The ground beneath us started to shake, before as we saw parts of the ceiling above start to fall. From above a section fell down and with it was Benson and Memphis. Where we stood Memphis seemed to have landed better than Benson, testing himself off and slowly walking closer if relishing what he was about to do. That's I saw Roswell and Tyson step forward, but Roswell was a little quicker. Hey! I looked at Roswell, seeing Memphis look up our way. Don't touch him, asshole! Roswell threw some at Memphis, vial of something, but it swiped out of the air effortlessly. Though through his cocky grin, Memphis crushed it within his hand. A mistake he'd soon realise he'd made. He roared in pain as the acid in the vial started to eat away at his hand, giving Benson the shot of putting some distance between them. In the throes of pain, Memphis knocked over an old lever, one that turned on a conveyor belt in that very room. Tyson, seen his chance, fired his gun, landing the shot right in his chest, but the bullet bounced off. If anything, it distracted Memphis from the pain happening on his hand and he returned fire immediately. The groan from the conveyor belt starting up was all I could register as I watched Tyson crumple next to me, holding his middle and then fall into the floor. I looked back to Memphis, who had now had his sights set on Roswell, marching forward with purpose. It was Orlando, having stepped up and huffed a blast of fire at his dad, distracting him. Leave him alone! Good time to grow up here, kid. Shame I just don't care anymore. I caught the sight of Roswell lobbing at the vial of acid towards Memphis. This one was caught and quickly discarded over his shoulder, with his attention now away from his son. Both were stepped back, but Memphis was quicker, knocking me aside and grabbing Roswell by the scruff. The prime vial of acid was knocked from his hand. Cute trick. Been a while since someone hurt me. As if Roswell weighed nothing, Memphis threw him just enough to adjust his grip around Roswell's throat. You're looking like Oswald is pissing me off, though. Another thunderous roar echoed from nearby. This time it came from Sal, charging forward and crashing into Memphis. With his bulk and the sudden tackle, Roswell was dropped and Sal ended up on the conveyor belt with Memphis. Roswell was struggling to catch his breath, but my attention went from helping him to watching out for Sal after only moments. I managed to catch a pair of them, Sal and Memphis, disappearing through a chute and out of sight. Benjamin picked himself up by this point and sped along the conveyor belt down the chute as well, gun in hand. Well, I'm going too. Upon taking the conveyor belt, Dean picked up the only thing he saw that resembled a weapon and disappeared down a corridor. In the moment of silence I was given, I looked at Tyson bleeding on the floor of the mill, twitching and groaning. Hoss had rushed over, already pulling off his shirt to have something to mop up the blood. He gave me a look and told me he'd had things handled as best he could here, but with that I followed the others in Dean's wake. The next floor down was darker still, more dusty. The groaning conveyor belt filled the silence. What we saw upon reaching the floor below was Sal pinned underneath Memphis, about to be roasted point blank by the fire already well enough inside Memphis's chest. Dean took a couple of steps forward and threw the sword he was carrying. Not as if he had anything else to use, but at least it connected with Memphis's side. The distraction was enough for Sal to reverse the grip, though. The two were groaning and roaring, still on the conveyor belt, somehow travelling down its length. Help! We took a few steps closer for it looked like Sal already dealt with the problem, pinning Memphis on his front, mouth clamped shut. With no gun and no mouth to breathe fire, I turned to the person next to me with a hopeful smile. What I saw was Roswell staring at me, hands in on another lever. I didn't have time to read the sign above it before he threw it, and the sound of sharp whirring added to the mix of groans in the conveyor belt. We all found ourselves looking down to the end of the conveyor belt, a large series of saw blades now alive and spinning viciously. 
Memphis and Sal notice too as their struggle resumed with Memphis now thrashing even harder. I was torn. I wanted to go help Sal without anything to offer in assistance. I felt I'd just get in the way. The sword was gone. I wasn't given a gun. The knife I had wasn't going to cut through his scales. If I could bring myself to do it. We watched as Sal was discarded over one side of the conveyor belt while Memphis rolled off the side closest to us. The gun Sal had on him clattered the ground was picked up casually by Memphis. Much of that disappointment that fat fuck my dad liked so much. He dusted off his shoulders, rolling his neck. Shame, Sal. Thought you had any to take me down, but I guess I was wrong. His eyes were set on Roswell, raising his gun almost painfully slow to point directly at him. It happened so fast, Benson rushed out of the dark and thrown himself in front of Roswell. He said nothing, just holding him close before eventually... He fell limp to the ground, bleeding out at Roswell's feet. Sal had risen up, and brandishing the sword struck Memphis. Like before, though, it did little else than to annoy him, even breaking on impact against his horns. Orlando and Roswell were trying to help a dying Benson, stammering and wondering what to do when I noticed another vial of acid next to my foot. I picked it up and looked to Dean, who was watching in horror as Sal found himself about to be torched again. Time slowed down to a crawl. I could hear Benson dying at my feet. I could see Sal already throwing his arms up to try and shield against the flames. I could smell the blood that had been spilled already. Everything making me feel sick. As I held the vial in my hand, everything seemed to move so fast in my head. And without thinking about it too much more, I threw it. I threw the vial in the shallow arc towards Memphis, not really knowing what to expect. Hey! Memphis! He turned just enough to see who yelled right as the vial smashed against his horn. The contents of the acid splashed across his face, his eyes, and he roared with pain and stumbled. Forgetting about Sal for a moment, he stumbled and threatened to breathe fire to keep people away. Sal wasn't clear of the line of fire, that's when Dean made his move. Rushing forward, he shoved Memphis out of the way. What none of us expected, though, maybe even including Dean, was that shoving Memphis as he did threw him right into the path of the saw blade. I could see Dean's eyes go wide, mouth hanging open as he watched Memphis come into contact with the saw. The roars echoed around us, blade caught in the muscle of his back and grinding deep into his neck. His blood misted upwards. We all stepped back and watched it happen. And then eventually, all was quiet. He didn't move. None of us did. He didn't speak. And even as we looked to one another slowly, we dared not say anything, just in case he was inviting him to say something too. The saw blade continued digging in deep into Memphis's torso, till it seemed to sputter out and die somewhere in the middle of his chest. If he'd somehow survived that, he had nothing left to hope for. Sal was the first one to move, looking our way and stumbling over, looking a bit pale. He dropped down next to Roswell and Orlando, looking down on Benson who looked on the edge of unconsciousness along with being covered in his own blood. Oswin, my boy. He was looking right at Roswell, blind to the rest of us here. Listen to me. I fear I don't have much time left. Manson, I'm... Sal put a hand on Roswell's shoulder, giving him a grave look. It was enough to silence him. Love you like a son, my boy. Even after all the grief and strife, the suffering and the pain. He wheezed, struggling for Roswell's hand and gripped it tight once he'd found purchase. But that boy will need you now. More than ever. So, so, so don't. Roswell looked to be on the verge of tears, slowly shaking his head as if denying what was happening in front of him. Don't go abandoning him now, all right? He mumbled for a few moments more before passing out. Though after being lightly shaken by Roswell, it took Sal to confirm what we assumed had happened. He had died. Hoss appeared soon after, having rushed down the steps nearby from the floor above. 
is, is it over? You look between Roswell, who's openly weeping, Orlando, who's a mess, Sal and Dean huddled together, Benson dead in Roswell's lap, then over to Memphis, splayed out, half concealed in the darkness. Yeah, I think so. I stumbled close to the hoss, afraid to ask. Pretty quickly hugged me, patted my back. Oh, Tyson's all right. Got there bleeding to the stop, I think, but someone better train for first aid to look him over. That's, that's great news. I forced a smile. Even while legitimately happy, it felt wrong to be happy in the wake of someone close to us dying. We left Memphis there, but Sal took the job of carrying Benson up. While we dealt with Memphis, by some miracle, we weren't done yet. Dean was exhausted and needed a rest, as was Orlando wanted to process his dad's death. I also wanted to look after Tyson just in case, though Tyson was conscious a little bit before needing to rest. This left Roswell and I to go to find Oswin, to go find the cabin and deliver the bad news. Occasionally I look over to Roswell, even while he was the one leading the way, it felt like he was following me. Maybe having Benson die in front of him was having more of a toll on him than I thought. It had shaken all of us, but it seemed to be sticking with Roswell more. Are you okay? He didn't respond, just keeping his eyes down on the ground as we trudged forward. Roswell? I'm not sure. Maybe. Did you want to talk about it? Did you? What's there to talk about? Just how close were you and Benson anyway? Not as close as you might think, but he was around a lot. Around enough that I didn't really consider a towel and he wouldn't be around. Did you love him? Huh? Oh, maybe. I don't know. He felt like something like a grandpa would. I knew he was old, so... He groaned, shaking his head. I just don't know how I'm going to explain this to Uncle. There's not going to be a good way of handling it, that's for sure. We spent the rest of the walk in silence as we approached the cabin we were met with a welcoming party. Well, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting to see you two again. We can hear it from over here. They're roaring anyway. I consider we can't hear that roaring anymore. Shall I assume that I'm free to go now? Well, not until we're sure. What's there to be sure about? You think he'd just let us go to come here? It's got a point. Don't think your boss would turn up by chance to get his hands dirty and get the job half finished. Oh, the more reason to suspect you two are out of a job now. Well, damn. All right, you can go then. Tom, buddy, are just going to trust they're telling the truth? Yep. And if they know, where does that leave us? Jack, for once in your goddamn life, can't things just be easy? Tom took the two steps necessary to be in range and swatted him roughly across the head, making him stumble. We're going to get out of here. Just you and me, buddy. He looked from Oswin to us. You guys need to move to the house before we leave. I'll manage if slow. Actually, could you help us bring him to the water mill? Everyone should still be there, I think. I may ask why. I'd assume you have made for the house again. I looked at Roswell, nudging him forward. His expression said it all, with Dom and Jack backing off slightly. Roswell, what's the matter? He told him, and I thought for a moment he'd break. He was stunned, nodded, and asked if he could be helped to the mill instead. The five of us headed towards the mill. Once we'd arrived, Dom and Jack took their leave, escaping through the mill, or at the very least heading inside. Part of me wondered what they'd think seeing Memphis left there like that. Oswin broke there, consoled by Sal over Benson's body, but that didn't stop him crying. He looked like how I imagine I did crying about my dad, though without the group of friends present swaddled me in a big hug. We gave them some privacy though, Dean feeling well enough to lead most of us back to the house. Sal remained behind, along with Hoss, just to give Oswin some help back to the house and what emotional support they could offer. 
By the time we got back, it was late in the afternoon, and we were all exhausted. One of the last things that Jack had said before he slipped away as he'd shut off the jammer once he'd made it off the mountain. Until then, it was just a waiting game. I waited by the back door until the others had come back, though it took a while between Hoss helping Oswin walk and Sal still carrying Benson's body. Oswin didn't want to speak, instead just watch over Benson until help arrived. Sal excused himself to go wash the blood off. Soon too did Hoss. He has already excused himself to do that too, and have a few moments to put themselves back together. Now that everyone was accounted for, I could do the same. Ty? I peeked into Tyson's room if I did anything else. The last I saw of him earlier had been a little loopy before passing out. With anything going on, I just wanted to make sure he was still breathing at the very least. Sure enough, he was just dozing, feet occasionally twitching. He needed new bandages, something to help the wounds heal better. But I could wait until I wasn't covered in dust and blood. Time ticked on, but while we rested, there wasn't much space for sleep. Between wondering where if we were truly safe and the excitement of things finally being over, what sleep we got was fleeting. Dean spent a lot of time in the kitchen initially, shoveling what food he could into himself and then promptly passing out with me in his arms after a shower we took together. There was nothing sexual, nothing beyond just getting clean at all really, but just feeling up against me made a world of difference, most importantly, safe. Time passed and it was quiet. For once in this vacation since anything had gone wrong, it was finally quiet. As much as we were free to have our vacation now, all we wanted was to go home and put all of this behind us. Just move on to something nicer, if we could. I woke sometime early in the morning. It was a peaceful day. The sun was out, the world outside was bright and warm, and we were alive. I got up and changed clothes, putting myself on autopilot without even considering I didn't need to anymore. There was no danger, but what was different was our access to the outside world. With my phone in hand, I saw they had reception. So I didn't register significant immediately, so I processed it and I found myself smiling excitedly. Rushing downstairs, I looked around, feeling full of vigour, phone in hand. Should I try calling? It felt momentous enough to be something to wait for everyone for. Or well, at the very least double check no one else really called. But I looked at my phone, I felt a chill down my spine. Something didn't feel right. Something about that very moment felt off. Is anyone there? No response. Peeking into the side where I'd last seen Ox or Oswin had only Benson lay in there, though now covered with a sheet. I took it that everyone was just sleeping. That's all it had to be. I saw an eerie blue glow in the corner of my vision. It didn't last long. I saw it in the direction of the basement. When I got down there, though, it was quiet. No one was down here as far as I could tell. The lights were off and the secret passage closed. Anyone down here? I was about to leave and head back upstairs when I felt the fur on the back of my neck stand on end. Something was wrong down here. My curiosity was getting the better of me. We already dealt with Memphis. All the danger was gone, right? As I wandered the basement, I found nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing even wrong in the gym from the brief glance I gave it. The vault, though, that's where I found something wrong. I spotted it immediately. This was what was wrong. First was Thanatos laying sprawled out on the floor, seemingly discarded without a care in the world. The second, though, was the vault door was open. Not by much, but I could tell it wasn't sitting right along the keypad next to the door, having just a faint glow coming off it. Hello? Thanatos was offline, and with it the vault, which means someone put in the code to open the door. But did they go inside? Carefully I approached the door and eased it open more so I could look inside. All the stretch before me was a dark room. The contents I could barely make out until I could step in and use my phone as a flashlight. The faint glint of broken glass on the floor made me kneel down to get a closer look. In a puddle on the floor was a green liquid, who didn't smell of anything I could identify. Was it Oswin's medicine? Why was it spilled on the ground like this? Had someone opened the door just to do this? Hey, Thanatos, can you hear me at all? 
I had checked the panel properly since my arrival and saw the word lit up on the screen. Offline. If he was offline, I could yell down the house, but he probably wouldn't be able to hear me. I made my way back upstairs with Thanatos in my arms, wondering what I should do with him. Roswell was the one to ask him about him for sure. He wasn't in his room, and though I didn't search the house for long, I found myself standing outside. It was as peaceful as it was when I woke up. I couldn't shake that feeling from earlier. I did feel like something was wrong. Roswell? He wasn't by the pool. In fact, it looked like no one had been there in a fair while. Roswell, are you there? That feeling started to go strong when I didn't find him in the greenhouse either. I looked down to Thanatos with a frown, turned him over slowly. It looked like he was just sleeping. It was all limp. Then it started to sink in. My search for Roswell became more desperate. My fur was bristling off my skin the closer I seemed to get to the hedge maze, the sign that I took as me being in the right place. Turn after turn through the maze I took, trying to remember the path I took when Thanatos guided me to the middle. Part of me wanted to find nothing in the centre of the maze. The other part wanted Roswell. I just wasn't sure finding Roswell was going to be good or bad. Thankfully, I didn't have to wait long. My breath caught in my chest as the middle of the hedge maze opened up before me. Roswell was sitting on the bench, head down, where I could see even this far away, struggling to breathe. Roswell? Dave. I wandered closer, stopping me before I'm unsure what to say or do at first, for he glanced up at me briefly. Good morning. Hey, I am. Um, found Thanatos downstairs and. Old and limp out, out, Roswell barely managed to hold his hands out for me to hand him over. The act dropped an envelope from Roswell's lap, a single name written on the front. And what's this? Roswell looked me to the letter, watched me pick it up and see that it was addressed to me. That's for you. For me? Carefully opened the letter, put out the contents and started to read. Dave. If you're reading this, our vacation is about to be over. In the best way possible, too. I wrote this in hopes that when we come back from the watermill, we'd all have survived. We'll be able to go home and one day put all this behind us. But things are never that simple, are they? There's always something that gets overlooked, or someone that gets overlooked and lost along the way. If you're reading this, then either you came back to the mansion without me, or I gave you this letter. For what it's worth, I hope that I'm the one who's able to give it to you. I was doomed from the beginning, Dave. I was never meant to live past his vacation. From making myself more sick to get clearer visions from the vault, to trying anything and everything to keep you safe and alive. After all, if you died, what did that mean for the rest of us? It's the same as letting Memphis get access to the vault. No matter what happened, I couldn't allow that to happen either. All that ever mattered was to give you as much time as I possibly could, and hopefully you'd outlive your friend who was doomed to die all those years ago. But I'm not sad about it. Even if I may die soon, though that I'll do so happy. I have no regrets about what I did. If I had to do it all over again, I would. Not because of some grand ideal like love, or because I was deluded enough to think I'd be able to save the world, but because it was right. Whatever warped rail right means here anyway. My choice is between doing nothing and watching you all die, or choosing one person to take the fall and save the rest. Even if that person to die was me, then so be it. You just have to remember that so everything afterwards would be fine. Or at least that's what Thanatos told me. I wished I never had to make that decision, but years of nightmares and insistence of someone I trusted knew better convinced me otherwise. And then when I asked my uncle what was happening to me, he looked so sad and offered to help me with whatever I needed, no matter what. He offered his house, he offered everything he could to create a space where you were taken from so much danger, only for us to throw you right back in. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry for everything I put you through, for everything I did wrong, and for everything that I can't protect you from in the future. I'm sorry this road caused you so much pain and suffering that I wasn't able to make you understand sooner. Writing this is hard, but do you know what I'm looking forward to most? If I never get to see it, 
or rather remember it. It's meeting you again when we're kids, when the universe ends and everything resets after all those years. I'm looking forward to getting to meet you again. If it's something as simple as building a snowman, that day is incredibly special to me. What are the chances then if this is even real? Or that these things even happen? Even now, I wonder if this wasn't some huge, cruel joke by the gods or a demon just to make us suffer for entertainment. If I'm being honest, I'm scared, Dave. Scared of what's about to happen now that we're so close to the end. Will it hurt? Will you all forget me? Am I going to see my mom again? If you do get to see her, would you tell her that I love her? Just in case I can't? I put the letter down, looking to Roswell. The letter had ended there without him even signing his name. Roswell. Standing there in front of him, I could tell he was at peace. While not smiling, he looked calm. He was dead. As I struggled to come to terms with what was in front of me, the weight of the envelope registered as heavy enough to have more than just paper in it. Inside was another medal, this one engraved with a stylized M. Uh, Roswell! I flinched, hearing Oswin bellow from somewhere in the backyard. Immediately understood the position I was in and started to cry. Already missing Roswell, sad for the discovery that Oswin was about to make and the tragedy he wasn't coming home with us. I trudged back the way I came, having left a letter with Roswell and Thanatos. He looked up as I made myself known, emerging from the hedge maze. But while I didn't say anything, my face said it all. I came to a stop before him, cheeks still wet with tears and threatening to try cry again. Roswell? He's... he... Oh... He crumbled slightly. The crutch he was using being discarded as he sat down on the steps looking out into the backyard. Then quietly he started to cry. Eyes forward, that's all he did. Not reacting when I sat next to him or to offer a hug. We sat like that for a while. Long enough I lost track of exactly how long it had been. The only reason I knew time had passed at all was Hoss rushing up to tell us help was on its way. With Oswin injured, getting down the driver was difficult, but we managed. As a group, we left the mansion behind and stepped out onto the road to wait. And before long, we heard the telltale siren signalling someone had come to help. Three weeks later. It had been a long two weeks. A lot of us just crying and breaking down the way the hospital and police station explained what happened. It was a miracle that we were for the most part uninjured, at least physically. They had to keep Tyson in the hospital. He only just got discharged a few days before, after surgery. Apparently he's very lucky in how the bullets had hit him. There was going to be potentially years for him to fully recover. It meant they couldn't go to Roswell's funeral. But given the circumstances, no one blamed him. The rest of us, though, were shaken and still jittery. Maybe we all thought that we were still going to be hunted or about to wake up back on that mountain. As the nights went by, though, the easier got to realise that I was safe at home. This wasn't some dream that Thanatos was feeding me. I looked across to Dean, who was on his knees next to me, for how slightly furrowed as he made the grass around Dad's grave sit right before moving on to the flowers. Thanks, Dean. Oh, it's no trouble. Can't have looks looking messy, can we? A warm smile found its way onto my face as he worked. He seemed too focused, and when satisfied, sat back with a sigh and turned to me. Well, what do you think? I think I owe my boyfriend some affection when we get home. Oh, shall I read in between the lines there? I chuckled, leaning over and kissing him quickly on the nose. Not sure. Maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. I guess we'll find out when we get home. Dean's expression wasn't where I expected it to be when I pulled back. I wonder if Dean wasn't looking at me. Instead, his attention was drawn behind me to two people coming our way. Hello. Oswin mumbled, looking between the two of us. 
Next one was his sister, Florencia, who he met at Roswell's funeral. How are you doing? Are you doing well, yourselves? Uh, fine, I guess. Better than bad. Oswin just grunted, keeping his eyes anywhere but us. Were you visiting Roswell? We were. Well, that wasn't the only reason we came here today. Well, considering it more convenient that you two are here more than that being the reason we came here specifically. What do you mean? Uh, Flora had something she wanted to give you. Did we leave some behind on the mountain? I mean, something more than what already went back to retrieve. Oh, not at all. Then what? She dug around in her pocket and offered her a medal. The metal glinting lightly in the sun. Dean and I looked at one another, confused for the metal was jostled in our direction for one of us to take. Um, thanks? Dean took the medal carefully and turned it over in hand, confused. She said it seemed it's important you have this, if not for now, but some other time. I don't think we're ever going to be in a position to be on that mountain. I don't want to be on that mountain. Oh, you never know. Well, I'd much rather stay at home. That vacation was more than enough for one lifetime. Dean handed the medal to me and I nodded slowly to myself, looking back up at Oswin. She does know the vault was open and what was inside was destroyed, right? Oh, she does. Then this really doesn't have any use, at least not to us. Therein lies the trick. It's going to be useful for someone. Perhaps you, perhaps it's someone else. That's not for us to know. Well, I don't understand. Well, that's all right. Someone will, someday. A question, Flora. Yes? No reason why you don't hand it over this one. I do recall having a second one to hand over. Careful, dear brother. That's not for today. Then when? Some other time, perhaps. But not today. Not, not even this lifetime. Well, I don't mean to upset anyone by asking this, but... This whole game with the medals and everything, was it worth it? You're still playing whatever game it was you set us on when you were already done. Someone has to. Well, please leave us out of it. Oh? I just... I just want to live my peaceful life happy with Dave by my side for as long as we can make it work. That's all. He put an arm around me and Florencia leaned in, curious. If only until Oswin placed a hand on his shoulder and eased her back. Respectable. Which is a good note to leave you on, I think. What? It's time to go already? Oh, correct. I wish you both the very best. Please take care of yourselves. Are you too, Oswin? With a nod, he guided his sister away until they are far enough for where they continued on without looking back. Dean got up first, helping to my feet and put his arm around me protectively. Well, things are going to be all right, I think. You think so? Well, I know so. Might take a lot more therapy where I'm not seeing the inside of that mill again, but uh, it's something. Yeah. But for now, shall we head home? Mine or yours? You know what? I'm fine with either, so long as it's with you. He leaned down and planted a soft kiss on my cheek before we both turned to Dad's grave. Standing there with Dean, I felt happy, and for the first time in a long time, I felt myself reassured that things were going to be all right. And things continued to be all right. Days started to pass into weeks and then months, each of us finding our own little slice of happiness along the way. It took a while, but eventually Dean and I stopped having the nightmares about the mill, and he started asking around for some help with a new venture he'd thought up. His family are all in on starting businesses. Why not open a cafe? Slowly things came together, the two of us running the place. While the hours were long, getting to spend each day together never got old. The frequent visits from our friends coming in made it all the better. Then one night I just got down on one knee and asked Dean to marry me. Turns out he had the same idea, but was waiting till the weekend. It felt nice to make things that level of official. Ross wasn't the only one they got proposed to. Some nice tiger lady they met online asked him after they'd been seeing each other for a while. Last I heard, they were thinking of starting a family. Sal so bounced around for a bit, setting on running the local gym, but ended up pushing those of us that were still around to come visit. 
at least once a week. Much like Sal, Tyson also bounced around. He ended up going on his trip, and while it was hard to see him go, he was back within a month, or with it proudly sure off his new licence, one that read Tyson Halloway. Orlando disappeared for a bit, but reappeared with good news. He was headed overseas to go to culinary school properly. It was years before we saw him again. When we did, it was to open his bakery back home, just down the road. I never did see Oswin or his sister again. If anyone had told me they'd gone missing, I'd have believed them. For everything they put us through, I did sometimes wonder what became of them, or if things could have played out differently. But more often than not, I wish things would stay exactly as they were, now that we'd finally found our happiness. That was Dean's Path A at the end. And if you've played this, yes, I did skip that bit with Thanatos. I'll be going to some more work on this on my own time, because I still have things I haven't seen in here yet. I haven't had the time to play through it all. But uh, I'll be going back, as I said, to some highlights of Tyson's route and Roswell's. I will round off those two at the end there as well. As to the true ending, I'm not sure yet. I might just make you all work for it yourselves. But if you haven't yet downloaded Password yourselves, I do recommend it. There is far more Password to be read than you've seen myself doing here. And also there are some of the other streamers. I'm not sure if anyone's done everything in Password. I've kind of lost track a bit, but uh, hopefully someone has. But uh, it's almost it from me with Password, like I say. So definitely get hold of it yourselves, play through it, and see everything else there is to see in this really really detailed and written well written well written novel it's been one of those days today i'm running out of things to say but yeah definitely check it out the link as always is in the description as well where you can find it and also in description is my patron link and i always like to thank my top patrons by saying they are burnt toast kartek cobus visser legacy bucciarati lark uskerton bastian brian hall tanker cup edda corval Anubis Silverwind, Dissonance, Grizz, who did all the passwords, so go and support his patron as well. Uh, Spiderling, Kopi, Sindri Dragonwolf, Marcus, Seven King, Exag, Aaron Fox, Mohammed Al Zamel, Andy Peng, Samuto, Omar, Big Booty Judy, and Nova Starbo. Special thanks to those and thanks to everyone who actually donates to the patron. It's much, much appreciated. So what's next? Well, after delay, last week where I was sick, I couldn't do Polar Night. That will be coming up next. It might be next weekend or it might be in the week. I'm going to see how things go. That is definitely coming up next. Apart from that, I'm not quite sure where we're going to go next. I'm working on some schedule ideas. And of course, as I will fill a couple more passwords and just see how everything goes. But hopefully we'll get a few more now starting in April. So hopefully things will calm down in my life but yeah that is it for now i hope you've enjoyed dean's route in password i very much have been great fun doing all these uh, password videos and i'd say there's a couple more to come as edited highlights but until next time thanks for watching and bye for now <laughs>